Letter of Edward Stilling Fleet to Elizabeth Countess Dowager of Jocelyn by Edward Stilling Fleet, 1635 to 1699. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. To the Right Honorable Elizabeth, Countess Dowager of Jocelyn, Late Earl of Northumberland. Madam, among the number of those who congratulate your safe return into our own country wherein your ladyship is so justly beloved and esteemed by all that honor virtue and goodness give me leave to express my duty in an address more agreeable to my own profession than some perhaps will think it is to your quality and condition those i mean who measure their greatness by their contempt of religion and all that belong to it who know nothing of wit or virtue beyond the stage or think the leviathan contains in it the whole duty of man the utmost these persons will allow us whose honour and employment lies in asserting the truth of religion and persuading to the practice of it is that we are men of profession and speak of the things we are to live by as though reason and religion were such contemptible wares as scarce any would inquire after it if it were not some men's trade to put them off and were of less force in themselves because it is our duty and interest to maintain them is it any disparagement to a prince to have subjects obliged to defend his honour and servants to attend his person and must not what they say or do be at all minded because their own interest is joined with his why then should religion suffer in the esteem of any because she hath servants of her own to defend her cause as if it had always been a received principle with mankind that no man is to be trusted in his own profession according to this the lawyers ought to preach and the divines plead causes because the one gets nothing by divinity nor the other by law the merchant should visit patients and the physicians attend the committees of trade because it is dangerous trusting men in what they are most concerned to understand when once i see persons forbear to consult the lawyers about settling their estates and physicians for their health merely because they get by their professions i shall then think it is something else besides a pick at religion which makes them so ready to condemn whatever is said by us in behalf of it because forsooth it is our trade to defend it i wish it were theirs as much to practise it and then we should not be troubled with removing these and such prejudices against all the discourses of religion which are spoken and published by us but of these matters which we conceive to be of so high concernment to mankind we desire nothing may be considered besides the force of reason and weight of argument and surely none that own themselves to be men will despise that by whomsoever it is brought it is not every ridiculous story or vulgar prejudice or common infirmities or different opinions in smaller things which ought to render religion ridiculous or make the practice of it be thought mean and contemptible but however they are resolved to think of us let not religion suffer for our sakes indeed if they did as truly love religion as they despise us we might then have reason to suspect ourselves but when we suffer merely upon her account we have cause to rejoice in our dishonour and ought to suspect ourselves if such persons did speak well of us madam the main design of these following discourses is to recommend the great matters of religion from their truth and certainty their power and advocacy the benefit and advantage which comes by them and to dissuade from the practice of sin from the folly and reproach the present dissatisfaction and future punishment which attends it 
if they may be of use to the world and any ways serviceable to your ladyship in your retirements i have the end i aimed at and i have therefore presumed to dedicate them to your ladyship not only because of the great obligations which i have to yourself and family which were first laid upon me by that excellent person the late lord treasurer your father but likewise because you have so well followed so worthy an example in joining greatness and goodness together were it my design to publish your just and due character i should not need to find fault with the age to give the greater advantage to your virtue all the harm i wish the age is that there were many more persons of your condition that did as little need and as much despise the meanness of flattery i am madam your ladyship's most obliged and humble servant edward stillingfleet end of letter of edward stillingfleet to elizabeth countess dowager of jocelyn by edward stillingfleet sixteen thirty five to sixteen ninety nine